Alrighty, good morning Katie. You ready for a ride today? We're gonna go out for a nice little ride. Taking the scenery of Japan. Should be nice. How are you feeling today? You okay? No got any problems that I need to be aware of? No? Okay. Let's go then. Alrighty then, so Katie has decided to uh, spring a new leak. She's getting a bit incontinent in her old age. Now, I've spent so much uh, time and a fair amount of money on this bike just getting it to <laughs> just be reliable really. And I thought I was all there. Um, fixed the water pump. That was a hassle. It took ages to get the parts from America. Uh, I had to flush the engine three times with brand new oil just to clean it out because of all the uh, the gunk from the, the water, the coolant basically spilling in, into the uh, into the engine. So that was a, a bit of a hassle. Nice Aston Martin. Weird colour though. So I've done all that. Um, then I realised that the oil pressure light that's on now that you can see was a problem. So I thought it might be a case of uh, cheap oil filters so i bought her a brand new knn oil filter and that didn't solve the problem so then i started panicking thinking my engine was about to blow and i had an oil pressure but obviously that's not true because i do have oil pressure um but i guess i don't know maybe the pressure switch is faulty because i replaced it with a shitty um volkswagen golf one rather than a ktm genuine one so there's all sorts of little problems that have sort of reared their ugly heads and it's making me sort of as much as I love this old girl it's making me kind of pissed off with it um, so I'm thinking at the minute I'm probably gonna paint it you can see all the, the dodgy paintwork it's got a minute orange fairy in there and a black one on this side so I'm thinking I'm gonna find out what the new engine oil leak is fix that paint the bike and then sell it i don't want to sell it in a uh, condition where it's you know got got problems like oil leaks and stuff because wouldn't be nice for the new owner um so i want to fix it make sure it's okay and then get rid of it so this is going to take a little while um it seems to take forever to get spare parts from ktm japan and normally i just have to buy it buy the stuff myself from ebay and whatnot so I'll find out what gasket it is that needs replacing or whatever is wrong with it. Hopefully there's nothing cracked. One thing I did consider is um, this seemed to happen after I fitted the belly pan. Now the belly pan brackets go through one of the engine mounts. So I had a bad feeling that maybe I'd tightened up the, um, the bolt that holds the bracket onto the engine. Maybe too tight and maybe I've cracked something. Or it could be the opposite, it could be that that um, bracket has sort of spaced it out a little bit too much and it's, you know, left, left the, uh, the engine case slightly open, maybe. There's a lot of things it could be, so I'm going to have to investigate after work tonight. But, um, yeah, I think our time might have come to an end. And now it is just a case of, well, what the hell do I replace the Super Duke with? I certainly don't want to downgrade. Um, so I was thinking of getting a, a newer, uh, like a 1290 Super Duke rather than this one. This one's a 990. So I did think about, yeah, I could get a 1290R maybe. Um, but the money that I want to spend, uh, I'd have to get a used one, like say a 2015 model. And then again, I'd be worried, uh, a used KTM. I'll be back to having a lot more performance and a slightly newer bike but also having the, the problems that this one has um, so I don't know I'm sort of this time I'm thinking maybe I won't get a foreign bike um, now there's a lot of bikes on, on the market at the minute that I'm really interested in but most of them <laughs> are foreign bikes I'd love an Aprilia RS660 but here in Japan the price is absolutely fucking mental 
considering like what it costs in the states and europe here it's about three thousand dollars more and the other one i want obviously is the ktm duke 890r again crazy money 1.5 million yen here which is like fifteen thousand dollars much more expensive than europe triumph trident i thought that'd be a cool bike and it's super cheap they're like seven thousand pounds or whatever in england so that'd be a good bike wrong in japan it's like 1.2 million yen so way more expensive and plus the uh the bad thing about this country is the dealer dealer support networks are not per are not perfect they're not great so i'd love to buy a, a triumph like a you know a, a street triple or something but i've just heard nothing but bad bad stories about the um service you get from the dealers like rec recalls taking forever the dealers themselves not having parts so you book something in for a, a problem and it takes a month and they don't give you a, a courtesy vehicle so there's a lot of a lot of downsides with having a foreign bike here unless you're you know happy enough like i was with this bike unless you're happy enough to do everything yourself um but what what i've sort of come to realize is because my job is fixing bikes i don't really want to be fixing my own bike on uh, my day off oh, look that. is that a larder no way <laughs> yeah so I, like i don't want to um be fixing my own bike on my day off or a couple of times this week it's happened where this bike wouldn't start because there's a, some sort of voltage problem i don't know what the battery's new but the battery keeps going flat so i guess there's like a uh a parasitic leak like there's something going on something drawing power from the bike from the battery so again that's something i need to fix after work tonight which means i'm probably not going to get home till like nine o'clock or ten o'clock and i just i'm sort of sick of that now so ideally i want a buy a japanese bike that's got warranty so when you look at brand new bikes the only one that really jumps out to me is the mt09 now i've been a yamaha customer before so i know the um the local garage is a really good garage and when i had my mt07 nothing ever went wrong so i can assume that an mt09 probably nothing will go wrong so that is number one on my list right now the 2021 mt09 with all the electronics on it the uh six axis imu all the all the goodies um but yeah i think it's basically the case of now i just gotta wait and see what um what needs doing to the to the ktm and if if it's going to take ages to get stuff in to get the parts or whatever you know what's going to happen to my mind in that time i might i might decide that yeah i'm spending so much time fixing it that you know it's almost new <laughs> so i might have i might have unconvinced myself by then or i might have convinced myself to keep the ktm and just uh sort of keep it as keep it forever just try try and make it actually reliable but right now as it stands my my mindset is just like nah nah get rid of it get rid of it and buy a japanese bike i mean that engine man it's so nice so yeah guys that's my mindset right now what do you reckon shall i keep keep katie and fix her up and make her into a good reliable bike and tune her up to make her more fun for the circuit better suspension and stuff like that get it all painted looking beautiful or shall i just spend the minimum that i can get away with get it painted so it looks okay not go fancy with it or anything just flat color fix the engine oil leak fix the volt the, the power problem and get rid of it give me your feedback guys I need to know what you what, what do you think I should do because I'm shit at making decisions all right peace see you guys in the next video